Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, Moshmi. Hello, everyone. We're just trying to. All right. So I was just waiting that few of you just join me, and then we'll start it. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. Um, you know, I everybody has been asking me that I've been keeping on saying that there are certain A, B, C, D of uh, street photography. So I thought, let me just simplify the process and make it like A to Z of street photography for all of you guys so that you can learn a little bit more about the process. And whenever you go out, there should be a cheat sheet of street photography. So let's, let's, I'm trying. So anybody who knows me knows that I'm technically challenged. I don't know a lot about uh, technology, about things, but I'm trying something new today. Let's see if it can work. So let's, so this is what I wanted to teach you today. So I'm going to be teaching you A to Z of street photography, where A is the aesthetic appeal. Aesthetic appeal, it's a branch of philosophy uh, dealing with beauty and taste. So it relates to the initial feelings when you look at something. So when you look at a shot, there is always a feeling that makes you want to take that shot. So whenever you look at a frame, try to make a shot which creates that feeling inside you and you want to make that shot. So that is aesthetic appeal for you. It should be balanced, it should look straight and it should make you enter the frame. Next, very, very crucial. I'm, I'm just going to be doing it very fast because you know if it's A to Z then there are 26 alphabets and I have to, if I give two minutes also, then also we won't be able to finish it. B is the background. Now background is, you know, you all of us know. Background, it's the part of the image or a scene that forms a setting for the main figures. The circumstances or situation prevailing at a particular time or underline a particular event. Now you look at this shot. The background is the key, key thing here. It makes the subject stands out. It creates the whole mood of the scene and you want to look at the scene for a little longer. Now, when, when you look at a scene, it is very, very crucial that you stay in the scene. In today's life, the average life of a picture is not even three seconds. So if we can attract or we can catch the attention of the viewer for more than three seconds, your picture is a success. So look for aesthetics is the first, then look for background, which is another key. Now after B comes the C, which is very, very important. C is content. Now content and expression through a medium, can be, it can be a speech, writing or photography. Now we are photographers. We, we want to uh, be, uh, we want to feel the moment. We want to be in the moment. So what is content? Now content is nothing but how you want to express yourself in the picture. Please keep in mind, please know that this is, this is very, very important to make a picture. So aesthetics, background and content. So do you want to go more? All right, let's go more. Uh, this is D. Now, dynamics. Dynamics is another very, very important thing. It is, what does dynamics mean? It is effective action, which is vigorously active, forceful or simply energetic. Now, why, why do we like a shot where we see there are kids jumping in the river or there where we see that there is somebody who's playing. Now, this is a reason why, because, um, you know, there are, there are a lot of comments which are coming that I have to disable the comment. I really don't know how to uh, disable the comment. Let me just try it out. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I'm just trying it out, guys. Comment, turn off commenting. All right, okay. I hope this helps. I hope it does. <laughs> All right, this is much easier for you guys also to learn a little bit. Now, dynamics is important uh, because there are a lot of diagonal lines in it. And whenever there are strong diagonal lines, which is, diagonal line is also the most strongest line in the frame. So please understand when there is a diagonal line, you are bound to like that frame. So dynamics is what you should look at in your frame. Now, moving to the next one 
is emotion. Now, what is emotion? It's an effective state of consciousness in which joy, sorrow, fear, hate, or the like is experienced from a cognitive state of mind. Any image without emotion is flat. Now, emotion doesn't really mean that you have to find joy or sorrow. It could be humor as well. So look for emotion which resonates with you, which is the main key of any frame. What comes next? Form. Now, F, four letter word, but it is very, very strong. It simply means framing external appearance of a clearly defined area. Uh, it also can be related to composition. Form is when we look at a picture, it needs a balance. How our eye moves in the frame, left to right, right to left, and how it sticks into the center. Every corner of the frame, a viewer should have something to look at, something to look into, something to breathe in. There should be enough breathing space. There should be enough, uh, I would say, uh, exiting space also at the same time in a frame, which is very, very important. So guys, can you guess till now? So A, B, C, D, E, F. Can you live without any of the alphabet to make a frame? I don't think so. Now, should we move further? Let's, in your hearts, I'm, I'm sure these alphabets will have different words in your mind. So you can also make a diary. You can also make these cheat points and work accordingly what suits you the best. So can you think what comes for G? All right, without wasting time. G stands for graphics. It's the art of drawing pertaining to use of diagrams make an image look diagrammatic now being from art background i always like these graphics which are on the walls which are on the buses or which are uh, maybe on the graffitis so how to make that moment stand out with graphics how you place yourself in such a way that graphics in a scene become predominant and make the exact part of the scene. Now, I am also going a slightly, uh, you know, fast because I will give you time to ask your questions. So I'm trying to uh, cover up. I know I'm going slightly fast, but I will have to keep these things in mind. Otherwise, I will not be able to finish it. This is going to be there on my uh, profile for another 24 hours and you can see it. And you will, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask when I give you the time. I'll, what I'll do is I'll get you on live with me and you can ask me questions on live if we have time though. All right, so can you guess what comes for H? Uh, a hint, I do that a lot in my pictures. Let's see, humor. Humor doesn't need any definition. Humor is typically in street, I, I feel it's, it's slightly difficult to achieve. When we step out, we really want our pictures to have humor in them. But that time is, it just takes away a lot of our energy to see that humor because every day when we are walking on the street, we have baggages in our mind. We see the scene differently and how our moods are at different days. But when you, when you come out on the streets, spend time with yourself, and look for these scenes, you will find humor in this scene. Uh, coming to this shot, I, I saw this guy uh, sitting in a window and you know, these guys are, uh, this is a bus stop where I shoot every day uh, before the lockdown. And they come from all over the States. And this guy was sitting in the window and maybe trying his uh, pajamas, not realizing that he's creating the whole form. And when I witnessed that, I, uh, you know, first I laughed and then I took a shot. It is very, very important to be in the moment when you take a shot. Because if you didn't feel it, what are you going to show? Expression is something or when you want to express through a picture. Street photography is nothing but a dialogue. So to create that dialogue, you have to understand the dialogue yourself, get it inside you and then express it. Express it. 
Now, people who have joined late, let me just revise a little bit. Aesthetics, A for aesthetics, B for background, C for content, D for dynamics, E for emotion, F for form, G for graphics, H for humor. All right, moving to next. Do you think what could AI be? No, I is not I. I is illusion. Something that deceives by producing a false or misleading impression of reality. Now, if you look at this shot, there, this eye in my mind, I felt that this dog had three legs and needed a prosthetic operation kind of a scenario. And when I felt that stand of that scooter was coming out, it looked like it appeared like four legs to me. And that's what made me take a shot. And when I, you know, but you have to position yourself in such a way where it conveys that the, these are the four legs. So try to create illusions in your shots. It's very, very simple. The only criteria to make all these shots is that you are attentive enough. You, when you're stepping out, you're looking at things, slowing down. Right now I'm going fast, but slowing down is very, very important in life. I would say, see more, shoot less. It is very important in any craft. It is very, very important how to make a shot because till the time you don't see, you won't shoot. Uh, another thing, another thing which you could try out to see more is, uh, I get this a lot, that how do I see more? You know, it is very easy for you to say, you see more and you will shoot more. The best way would be, have, have timing or probably say that in two hours of shoot, I will not shoot for one hour. One hour, I will just concentrate on seeing things. I'll be a compulsive non-shooter. Not a compulsive shooter, but a compulsive non-shooter. I don't want to shoot things even if I get attracted to them. There's so many times when we step out, we find things and we are not able to shoot because we don't have a camera. Have you realized why? Because that's the time we are seeing things and we don't have an occupation or we don't want to shoot those things and we are continuously looking at that things. So look at those things. Also another key thing which you can do probably is that when you step out on maybe one of the weekends or one of the week weekdays, whichever you feel that you give yourself, uh, let's say 36 shots. Now, why am I saying, why did I, how did I jump onto the figure of 36 shots? I belong to a school of thought where, or old school of thought where I have shot from film. Now, shooting on film, I always used to get 36 shots. I used to see and value each and every shot. Uh, you will start valuing those shots and you will not come back with a lot of digital garbage. So spend time, that is very, very important. Can you think what is J? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. What could J be? Yes, my favorite, juxtaposition. <laughs> An act or instance of placing close together or side by side, especially for comparison or contrast. Now, do you think I just see things like this? They just appear to me and I start making shots? No, juxtaposition, you have to, you have to have an experience of some time. Sometimes, you know, some things just come to you. They will be just right there and you'll place it. Uh, looking at this shot, I'm, I'm surprised nobody's ever asked me this question before, that am I this tall that I can place like this? Can you see the height of the horse back and the horse there? This must be. So I was actually climbing on another caravan when I took this shot. So see the shot. Juxtaposition is will only happen when you have the ability to see two things at a time and you try to connect it. Now juxtaposition is not simply the head replacement therapy, which a lot of us think that, okay, change the head, put some other head and it'll juxtapose and make a form. No, it doesn't happen like that. It happens, that is one instance you could do it. But juxtaposition can also happen with variety of other things. It could be juxtaposition of different moods as well. It could be juxtaposition of the colors. It could be 
maybe you see red and blue in front and you see blue and red at the back and you try to juxtapose lines that way and it can be juxtaposition. And if you have any questions in your mind, please keep writing it. Uh, once this is over, I'm going to bring you live one by one. I'm just, I'm hoping that I have that much time. I'll bring you live with me and you will ask the question so that all of us can get benefit from that. All right. So what comes after J? It is another thing which I feel is very important in a photographer's life. And one photographer has to see into it. And that is keen eye. Without keen eye, nothing is possible. Now, finely tuned as an edge, characterized by distinction, distinctness of perception, extremely sensitive or responsive. You, your preoccupation, I, would, I keep on saying this, a photographer's job is just to see. We just have to see. Rest, a camera or any equipment will do. Don't worry about that. If you start, if you have the ability to see, photographs will follow. But what do we see now uh, when we step out? Is there anything particular that you like? Please try and see what resonates with you and then make a shot. Now, I'll give you this example. This, I, uh, I spent at least about hour and a half at this place. I saw this goat with, apparently, I, I felt that this looks like a duck head and I, there were ducks around and but at at the same time, it was morning and the ducks were out. They were not going into the shade. So I kept waiting that when these ducks will go in the shade and when this goat will come together and then I will get a shot. I wanted, I, before this shot actually happened, I had a similar kind of shot in my mind that I want to make this kind of shot. And it will benefit, it will benefit or it should benefit the viewer like it could see straight duck, another duck. And that was it. I never thought of another duck. So I had a shot with the third duck right next to the goat and I made the shot. It was a very, very bland shot where it looked like, okay, duck on the goat, duck at the back. But it wasn't solving a purpose. Now, if you will see the next, go uh, next duck just came out and that, that duck going right out the frame, it is creating that diagonal line and it is getting you inside the frame. Now, here's where aesthetic comes in place. Aesthetics and background also. Now, understand how every little thing is correlated. If the background wasn't clear, I will not be able to see the duck in the first place. So finish. Look, background is also where you can read the subject. It is also figure to ground. Now, when this happens, then comes C, content. What is the content? The content is that I can, the, the viewer starts trying to think what the hell is happening here. So that becomes the co content. Dynamics, the duck moving out becomes the dynamic. Emotion, now for me, it was, it had the emotional value that I, I saw this and I wanted to portray this. Form works like a form. Graphics, yes, it has graphic value, but can you get all the things in one picture? No, you cannot. I would say try just getting three to four picture, three to four uh, A, B, C, D or the alphabets in a picture and they will start working. You will start working and it will form a frame. Now, after the keen eye, it comes L. Now, I layers. This is something which have, when I started doing street photography, my initial five, six years, uh, I, I, was, uh, I was in love with layers. I wanted to practice layers as much as I could. Everybody who's listening, please understand, these are not Photoshop layers. These are layers where, you know, you create a sense of dimension where the viewer feels that he's in part of the frame. I, you look at the frame. Now, this is again that bus stop. There is, there is a line which binds the whole thing. If you will go inside the scene, you will see every element in their own different mood. And there is sudden, or I would say, uh, incidental eye contact which made the picture for me because I want to be a part of the frame. I want to be a part of the whole scenario. When a viewer reads it, now I, I'm, I'm always saying the viewer has to read it. 
some of you or maybe all of you would question why the hell should viewer read it it's my picture i have to be there it's i don't even care if the viewer likes it or not but let me tell you the whole process of a picture is a dialogue the photographer sees the frame he takes the picture and somebody has to read it now when somebody has to read it it could be the photographer himself what do you think the writer when he writes a poem he doesn't read himself he does so it has to he has to understand the image first he has to like after i i i if i look at this image after like maybe uh, i'm looking at this image today after well, let's say 8 years uh, when i was making this slide show i hadn't seen it now it just you know revives the memory of that time and without even knowing what was happening i'm suddenly a part of the frame and i go there i like the joy of the kids who are standing on the top i like the playfulness of all the kids and i like how they are placed in the frame and that becomes the layers so anybody who wants to experiment with layers please see that there is something or enough to be read in the frame in all directions and it creates a form so the viewer doesn't leave or again viewer or the photographer doesn't leave now do you think this this is just like you step out and the layers are happening there are certain things you have to keep in mind when you're making layers it first thing no overlap the minute you overlap two figures the scene is gone because understand these layers are like a painting you will never paint one subject over the other subject so always keep that in mind this is a very very important aspect of the layer another second thing is that there is enough to be read in the foreground there's enough to be read in the midground and there's enough to be read in the background it could be there i would say that there has to be a hero of the scene if you if you guys are listening or looking at the picture have a hero in your mind that okay this subject is my hero for me i will tell you after when when we finish this have a hero and rest of them should act like supporting actors now for me the guy in the foreground uh, looking at me that incidental eye contact is the lead hero of the picture i my eye goes into the entire frame and i stop looking at him and again my eye moves in the frame if you can create that uh i would say a circular eye movement in a layer that is what we need in a frame and that is how layers are formed so try layers it is very very interesting you become a part of the scene you become the director of the movie uh layers at times are done that you will have your heroes in front of you but then you won't have the background so in that condition you will have to move around a little bit create a background where every hero is every subject can be seen individually and there are enough leading line if you will see why this guy is also the hero is because of the blue leading line which is coming close to his lips and it is taking me or making me stick in the frame all right can you guess what m is m is minimalistic minimalistic is something which uh, you know i really don't uh, approach minimalistic frames i my frames are always very chaotic i'm looking for these uh, uh, i would say harmony in chaos and i would look at decisive moment uh, in a frame so what is minimalistic so it is using simple elements with a little embellishment in an artistic way so i saw this you know a uh, puddle of water this uh, somebody had been i don't know how somebody was throwing or somebody it was there then i saw this bus passing by and it just felt like these these kids are wearing diapers and this was puddle a kind of just made me uh, feel that yes this is there is no human but there is human kind of uh, i would say presence street photography doesn't really need a human person in the frame it requires a sense of human presence where i could put myself and understand what is happening in the frame so at this scene with four kids uh, we all know even with wearing diapers they can leak at times so this felt like they are leaking with nothing 
apart and I try to make this very, very minimalistic frame and it is in front of you. Now, after M, take another guess. It comes as necessary elements. Essential, indispensable or requisite. Uh, so think about it. Is this street photography first? For me, it is. For me, it is definitely uh, creating a uh, emotion. It definitely makes me feel that there is something like a friend zone happening there or some, some dog is like really... See, there are, there are different ways how you can read a frame. This could be also a subjective interpretation. Uh, you know, when there are two dogs, both of them black, it could be also that uh, this guy is really looking at his, uh, how he's going to feel when he's turning old with a with wife or husband i don't know that is you know how we decide uh, but what is the necessary element here the necessary element is that piece of cardboard which has a heart i uh, you know i i got this question which was very funny about uh, i think two years back when i shot this frame and somebody said that uh, were you carrying this cardboard box with a heart with you now, guys, I want you to understand, I'm not a magician. I'm, I'm not also, uh, I don't know what things are going to happen. So I don't carry balloons with me. I don't know how dogs can speak and I cannot make them speak. And I don't carry stuff in my pocket that whenever there's a shot happening, I'll take out something from my pocket and throw it on the street and the shots will happen. If I had to do that, then I should have been a magician and doing something, performing on the stage. Uh, I would have been earning money. My, my family would have been happy that at least he is doing something. The pure joy of street is when you get an image which you resonate with and which you feel that you want to be a part of this image. I, uh, uh, there, is, there is a sequence, there's a contact sheet of about 10 to 14 shots of this scene. This shot didn't start with three dogs. This shot started with two dogs. And I was, I was you know, overwhelmed to see a cardboard box with a heart on it. And uh, I wanted just the two dogs maybe uh, in that loving mood. But, you know, to my surprise, uh, I have the shot where they were humping also. But then that is not what I want to show. My, uh, there are certain ethics when I want to showcase my work. I want to show something which is pure, something which resonates with you. So I wanted to show, I waited in the scene for, no, for a little longer. But at the same time, please understand, there are at least 10,000 moments where I waited and nothing happened. So don't think that I step out and I start making shots. You have to be patient to make shots. And please keep in mind these necessary elements without the heart, without the box, the shot wouldn't exist. It would have no meaning. Why? Because there will not be any human presence at first and you will not be able to relate to it. Now, N, L, O. Now, again, observation skills, guys. You want to do photography, you want to do street photography, you, you're doing it by choice. Nobody is forcing you to do uh, street photography. So to improve your observation skill, what is what are observation skills? Simply understand, it's act of noticing or perceiving instantly. How, how when you're walking on the street, there are some things which you notice and all your friends who are walking next to you, they just overlook. Now, these are the crucial aspect. These are the crucial things which will make you or stand out as a street photographer or as a photographer. Look for those things which you normally, which you would also normally miss in the first go. Uh, there are a lot of times how I practice it, that I would take a 100 meter stretch. I would walk that street. Uh, I would see things which I like. Then I walk back and try to see things which I missed in the first place and keep walking that street for at least four or five times if I must make a shot. But that is also preparation. Observation skills is a is lot about preparation. How you prepare your shot, how you prepare yourself and how you want to look at things in a very, very different way is about observation skills. Uh, coming to the shot, uh, there were two scooters uh, which were packed in, uh, you know, tarpaules and I saw this dog. This was, this, these shots just happen. You just see it. And I saw this dog, which was turning away and the ears of the dog and the color, it was just there. And I keep saying that it's just there. But when you, when you start shooting for long hours, when you start shooting for uh, 
maybe 26 years or 25 years, then you will, these things, you will just start seeing them right in front of you. Uh, another thing which I would like to mention right now, when I say that I'm a photographer who's been shooting for 26 years, I would say that I'm a learner who's been learning from the past 25 years. And also unlearning. We're living in a world where, you know, photography is the most spoken language today. Today, if, you know, if you're going through Instagram, if you're going through Facebook or any other social media or even in the galleries, real life galleries, you look at pictures, nobody, the worst part is that you, the photographer can't travel with the pictures himself. The pictures travel on their own and you're looking at the picture and you're reading the picture subjectively. So that is very, very important in any aspect of photography that please keep your observation skills very, very handy to make pictures. Then comes proximity. What does proximity, proximity means? It means nearness and place, time, order or relation. How do we do it? Now, can you, can you see the distance between the guy who's jumping and the boat? The distance could be, would be easily, easily 25 feet. Can we do that? Yes, we could do that. Now, how, uh, how we work with the camera, I will come to that after this. Uh, there must be an alphabet which will talk about that. But proximity is where you connect far and near in one shot and makes the viewer feel that it is something which is strange happening in front of you. And how is this happening where somebody is looking like a Superman and the other one is a dwarf. dwarf. So try and create these kind of pictures. This is just an example. I could, uh, there are limitations that I could not show you at least 10 pictures of each thing where you would understand uh, things in a better scenario. I'm just trying my humble best so far that I could just explain things in one image uh, and also in, you know, in one slide. Quirky, this is me. A peculiar action, behavior of mannerism, something strange. I, I love to do quirky stuff. I, uh, when somebody looks at my work in the current time, I feel this is, this is my current situation. I'm, I'm looking at things quirkily. I'm, uh, I'm expressing myself. I'm um, in a quirky manner. Uh, this is my voice recently. I'm, I'm talking in this language. This is my dialogue. If somebody has to read my book right now or a novel, uh, I would say if it's series of photo, uh, photos is a novel, then if somebody reads at my current novel, it's going to be quirky. Uh, I, uh, this was shot in M um, Ahmedabad. Uh, this was during a workshop and I, uh, I saw this scene and I, I saw that the eye of uh, the cock chicken and the woman looked pretty much same and I tried to align where it looked like one face looking at the other direction and the nose becomes the same common nose and that is what quirkiness is and that is how I try to achieve it. Now after this everybody wants to really know about this that how am I achieving everything in focus something which is at least you know when I shoot I feel if I can't smell the person I will not shoot the person. Anybody who's close to me uh, has to be like just about 10 inches and the further if you go down could be 30 feet. Now the difference between the kid who's standing here and the last person is about 30 feet at least. Range focus, it's knowing your distance from your subject or subjects. Uh, it is a very, very handy tool when you step out as street photographer. Uh, F13 is the minimum you should work with. Uh, when you're working in a scene like this, uh, it's, the shutter speed should be minimum one by 250. ISO, now the settings which I work with, um, ISO is always 800, always, even in bright daylight. Uh, I work with in between F13 and F16 and my shutter speed is minimum 1 by 250. If the light is really good, then I'll increase the speed if I'm already on F16. And if, if I need something uh, very dynamic, then I'll go on uh, 1 by 1000 and come down to 1 by 13. This is what I'm playing with. Uh, photography is about uh, making, I would say, eliminating a lot of decisions. It is just about because everything is happening so quick that you want to make decisions very, very quick. And it should happen uh, in an you know, instant. If you, if, you miss, if you miss the shot, then you miss the whole plot. Then your whole work as a street photographer has gone. So know the focus, uh, how, how close you want to go. Uh, with Leica, it's very easy. 
uh, you know that something, if you work on F16 or F13 and you want something from two feet to 20 feet in focus, then you will align the focus in that way and uh, you will press the shutter and you will get a shot. It is, I, I would like to make my camera as a point and shoot because I don't want to waste time on adjusting. A lot of times when you're working on autofocus, what happens is that it keeps hunting. You're the person in the front, the camera doesn't know, camera doesn't have an IQ on its own. There's somebody who has to guide or override the camera to make the camera understand that I want this shot. Listen, I am the one who's writing the book here. I have the pen. So camera is just like a pen. Tomorrow you can't expect you know, a writer to write a poem and the pen writing on its own. No, it doesn't happen. Please understand you should have the ability and you have the ability, all of you. you know, Try to understand that when you step out, there could be times when you, it is... Uh, you know, the lights are different, you know, the, the, so understand it could be F13, it could be F11 also. With a crop sensor, F11 is fine. So this is another thing which I wanted to touch. A lot of questions like this have, have been coming to me, whether I should shoot crop sensor or full frame. Now, crop sensor will achieve whatever you achieve on a full frame at F16, crop sensor will achieve at F13. Because it has the ability, it's a smaller sensor because you look at your cell phones, you know, you just pick it up, it is point and shoot, you get everything in focus. So the smaller the sensor, the lesser light it needs to make a frame. So try and go out, try doing range focus. Now, if your camera doesn't, it's not a manual focus lens. How do you do it? You step out, stand next to a wall or maybe something which you can focus on. Let's say uh, you normally go four feet away from your person. Stay. Look at the wall, focus it, focus your camera on the wall at four feet and put it on manual focus and then just go out and keep making shots. Shots will happen. These, I'm not telling you the techniques. Now today, the workshop, the core idea of the workshop was not to give you content which is already available on the internet. I don't want you to know the settings, all right, this is the setting what you can achieve on. Settings, you know, I feel these things are like some things which everybody will know eventually. Some will know the techniques in like two months uh, and somebody who's like technologically challenged like me will take two years to understand the same uh, beautiful lines which I have crafted in a way. I don't understand. I don't understand technology. So I just work the old school way. I just like to work on range focus and I like to make it easier with that. If you have any questions regarding range focus, just drop a you know, message, then I'll try to tell you. Similarity. This is another thing which I really like to work with. I work a lot actually with similarity. It's the state of being similar, resemblance or echo. Now echo is a term which was, uh, which was uh, you know, I would say discovered by painters. They used to, uh, you know, have this echo of colors in their painting. They, uh, somebody like, uh, I would say Monet, he had, he always used to have red a dab of red in his painting and you could see that in the background and something in the foreground so i'm not saying that i'm trying to uh, echo or do a similarity of red in this frame this was this is the similarity of the postures this is the similarity of the things or the echo of the things which are doing uh, which they're doing and also uh, if you'll see if you look back there is enough depth in the frame to make it the entire scene now, after similarity, there's another aspect. If you will look at this frame, uh, some of you must be thinking that why do my frames look three-dimensional? Now, three-dimensional, how can photographs are two-dimensional? You know, you, there's something which you can hold in your hand. Nothing can protrude out. How can photographs be three-dimensional? Now, it is how the photographer, he has the ability of having or appearing to have length breadth and depth in a frame. Now, again, this is, this is slightly different from layers. Three-dimensional is also how it looks like a cube, the frame. Uh, you, will, you will have to, you will see that there is, you can see the length, you can see how deep the frame can go and how, how wide the frame is. You, I, why I took this shot? Now, the key, the hand was lovely for me. It was like, he, he's trying to hold that guy at the back. But then this shadow on the left on that guy's uh, white kurta was the killer for me. I made that shot because of that. 
And then the whole scene, if you will try to read the whole scene, then it looks like your eye moves in the frame and that becomes three dimensional. So try to make a two dimensional frame into a three dimensional. And how do you do that? Try to have length in your frame, breadth in your frame and depth in your frame. How do you achieve that? No overlapping. Please make a promise to yourself. If there's an overlap, scrape that picture right now. Try with, you don't have to really go out and get five people. Try this with three people to go with. You know, I've, I've learned this, that three is the strongest numbers in frames. Have you ever thought why? You know, all our emergency numbers are three. All, if you will look back, there, there are poems which are three little studios, three little pigs, and also uh, Indian movie, three idiots. Why three? You know, they could have been five idiots. Why not three? Why not five? It's because our brains are tuned to understand what is in threes much better. We understand threes much better. So try to get these three dimensional frames. All right, time is running out. Let me, unique moment. Now, limited in occurrence for a presented time or space. When you, when you step out, there's always some things which, which keep happening. And you want to find that unique moment from that moment. Now, you really don't have to wait for a bigger moment. You know, decisive moment is not that you really have to wait for somebody to jump from the building. Decisive moment or unique moment is what you create in that moment which is available. And where the photographer feel that this from that whole moment was unique. So that is the decisive moment. So try to look for those little things. Here, uh, you know, this guy was, uh, I don't know, if, I have never worn a starry underwear in my life, but I saw this guy wearing a starry underwear next to the bus. It was just uh, <laughs> unique and I made me press the shutter. All right, let me just have a glass of water, please. Thank you. All right, vantage point. So vantage point, it's a position or a place affording some advantage or having the view in your command. You can easily see the picture, how you can you know, place something which is very close and something which is far and you try to create that vantage point. Vantage point is simply where you stand and where you press the shutter. Vantage point is also we can easily or we can, if you want to decipher it easily that four friends go out Street photography, uh, firstly, street photography is not a group sport. Don't do it. Even if you have friends, like go out, meet them for breakfast, tell them you are going in different ways and then make a shot. Vantage point is something, it is that four of you will go out at the same place, you will make shots differently. And that is what vantage point is. So try and create those vantage magical points where only it's your main point of view. Whimsical, <laughs> erratic or unpredictable odd ideas. Try and see what you can connect in the scene, what you can create with your camera or what your eyes or what your vision, with your vision, and you will create whimsical frames. It is just erratic and it is just unpredictable. You can't step out that, okay, today I'm going to cre create whimsical frames. Today, I'm going to create only erratical kind of shots or odd ideas will come in my mind and I'll start making frames. Now, go there, see things unfolding in front of you. I, I am a strong believer that you have to wait for a scene to unfold. You have to know when a moment is going to deliver. You have to be a patient. You have to see it's like a graph where it peaks up at a time. You make a shot and it falls through. That is what whimsical is and try to create those frames. Then comes X factor. We all know without the X factor, there is no frame. Can you see what is the X factor here? It was the lens flare, which came onto this guy's head and looked like a halo. Any frame, if you want to look at any frame, if you, if you, if you want to spend more time in the frame, there has to be an X factor. Any, any salesman also, any, uh, I would say a writer also, there is a, or even a model, if there's no X factor, you will not look at them. So any frames, if you want to make them stand out, uh, you, all right, so this we are talking about Instagram or Facebooks, but let's see, do you remember when you went to a gallery, 
There were 20 frames or 100 frames in a row. You don't look or stop at every frame. You stop at a frame which intrigues you. And that frame would have an X factor. Now that X factor could be light, that X factor could be composition. So know how you want to create that X factor in your frame. All right. Now without why, there is no use of taking pictures. You have to be yourself. Now yourself is, when I say yourself, it is about the vision. It is about your vision, how you want to be or how you want to see. You are the only thing you'll ever need. You won't need anybody else. Please believe that be yourself and believe in yourself because everybody else is taken. Now today, if you will try and copy somebody's work, it is good, you know, copying initially is fine that you will learn a lot of things out of it and you will try to practice and find your way. But if you, uh, you know, lose the plot and you just keep copying, then it is secondhand voice. What are you going to, somebody's going to look at picture and your picture and say, oh, this is, you know what, this picture reminds me of somebody else's picture. The whole plot has failed. You know, it is when you're writing a diary to yourself, you don't want to write somebody's, somebody else's expression in that diary. You can't lie to yourself. So be yourself. Yourself, even if it is wrong, I would say, even if it is wrong, please try it out. And don't think that people are not understanding your work. People will. Please give them enough voice. By just one picture out there, people will not know your voice. Give them at least 20 images and they will know your voice that this is you and this is that is where you will come into play and that yourself is very important today when you're walking uh, out on the street you don't want to be called oh your work is just like bruce gillen oh your work is just like alex webb now these are masters i would say please try their work try the experiment these these works should be like experiment but after that find your voice and be yourself and can you guess guys what is Z, that is the last thing for today. I don't think we'll have time, enough time for question and answers. Maybe we'll have to do another session for that. But what does Z stands for? All right, zeal, eager desire and enthusiasm. This is, this is very important. Uh, every day I wake up, whenever I want to go sh to take pictures, I have to feel like a kid every day. I, I want to, I really pray that I get fresh pair of eyes every day. I want to walk the same streets and make new pictures from that place. That is what zeal is. Uh, you don't have to, uh, zeal is not something that, okay, I'm sitting at home sending somebody else to make pictures. If you want to make pictures, you will have to step out and make pictures. Don't be lethargic. You will not make pictures by sitting at home. You will have to step out to make pictures. Zeal or passion is something which will keep you going in life. And that will... Now, if you, if you will look at A to Z, these, these things are not just for street photography. You can also uh, apply them for different uh, genres of photography or even, I would say, in life in general. These, these words are very, very important. It is, it is just your character, how you apply your character in life. So... Uh, Yes, this is, this is what I wanted to give you, A to Z of street photography. Um, and also, you know, my, I, as a mentor, I felt that my work is like, uh, I, I wanted to give you alphabets. I help you make words. I'll tell you how to make love out of it. I'll tell you, all right, the spelling of love is L-O-V-E. Or I'll tell you the spelling of uh, fear is F-E-A-R. Or humor is H-U-M-O-U-R. Or, you know, but the whole idea of a mentor is to give you words, alphabets, but you have to write your own poems. And that is where yourself will come. So please step out, be yourself and start making poems for yourself. And I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you so much. We will do definitely have the question answer session, maybe very, very soon. Please have your questions ready and I'm, I'll definitely come back soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for listening.